Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. We are continuing with our uh, uh, discussions on traditions in world cinema. So, today's topic is the French New Wave. Now, um, it's an interesting area because it had a far reaching and a pretty long lasting impact on uh, world cinema. The key words here are Othier film theory. Uh, we are going to look at certain directors, we are also going to look at certain major names associated with uh, this movement called the French New Wave, which is so important in our understanding of traditions in world cinema. Some of the major names that we will be touching upon um, are Francois Truffaut, Jean Luc Godard and Alain Rene. These films, um, the films that uh, they are known for or uh, perhaps uh, a better way of putting it would be the most memorable films are Last Year in Mariaba, that is by Rene, uh, The 400 Blows or Les Quatre Cent Coupe, that is by um, Francois Truffaut, Jules and Jim, that is again by Truffaut and Aboud the Souffle and Abandh the Path by Jean Liu Godard. I mean, just a handful of films, but uh, um, uh, of course, these people had made much more than this. Now, what is Authier theory? Um, it was developed by a film critic, a French film critic called Andre Bezon, and uh, his disciples, who were a bunch of film critics such as uh, Truffaut, Godard, Rene, Chabrol. Uh, and uh, Louis Malle, they declared and the manifesto was that the director was the true author of a film. You get it like the way an author pens a novel, a book. Similarly, a director is also an author of a film and he is the one who, is, who can stake a major claim on the authorship of the film. So, it is not the studio, not the technical theme, not the stars definitely or the genre, but it is the filmmaker, it is the director who can uh, stake a claim to being a, the uh, real owner, the real author of a film. It all began uh, on uh, 30th March 1948 when Alexandre Astru who was a literary come, uh, <coughs> come a literary critic come cine uh, critic and he published an article called uh, La Camera Stilo which is uh, like camera as a pen and it heralded a new wave in cinema as through based his article on analogy comparing a film director to a novelist and a pen becomes his pen uh, and uh, sorry a camera becomes his pen. The comparison uh, implied uh, that cinema had a language of its own. The idea was clear to elevate cinema to the level of other arts and to emphasize on its personal and psychological value. The peak of the French new wave is between 1958 and 1964, uh, where several young film directors wrote and directed hundreds of films in France. These filmmakers were determined to shake up the film industry by presenting a collection of unconventional stories told in bold new styles. So, you have to remember two uh, terms here, new styles of cinema and unconventional stories. Um, I would ask you to watch a movie like Jules and Jim here, which is about Manaj Troad three young people, two, uh, two young men and a young woman, how they fall in love and uh, their adventures, their journey uh, through history, 
and then a journey through life and then um, the end they meet with. So, an extremely bold and adventurous kind of a story, an unconventional story told in a very new style. New film, uh, new wave films were basically uh, low budget, they were produced quickly and were made to look spontaneous, unlike the um, you know high production kind of a cinema, glossy cinema that was the order of the day. These films helped in launching a new generation of stars, for example, actors um, who uh, otherwise would not have ever got a chance, they were not trained and they were not like conventional kind of actors, but they were given a chance to prove their abilities and uh, soon a new generation of actors took over, most uh, famously someone like uh, mm, uh, Jean Lapeau, uh, uh, sorry Jean Paul who was uh, uh, who was a very um, uh, frequent star of all through four films. So we had uh, um, uh, actors, the new wave actors who would um, uh, wander about the streets of Paris without makeup and were uh, shot by handheld cameras. Though it changed the cultural landscape, it was a truly social phenomenon that grew out of a range of influences and factors. An important reason for the rise of the new wave cinema was France's post Second World War cultural context. André Bézon, an influential film critic, wrote extensively about films and soon created an awareness about films. People were encouraged to discuss the relative values of films and directors. Thus, it all fostered a detailed knowledge of film history as well as film techniques and storytelling. Another landmark of this period was establishment of a film journal, a serious film journal and not a, a typical um, fan magazine, a film magazine, a gossip magazine, but it was a very serious film uh, journal called Cahier du Cinema and it was established in the 50s. It was an influential journal of French films and discussed world cinema. The policy was uh, uh, to uh, put into practice the manifesto of the French new wave directors and uh, the idea, uh, some of the basic ideas or the premises were they criticized films which had high production values, they, which relied on studios and stars and followed the genre conventions. François Truffaut built on, his, on this idea a few years later when he wrote his uh, uh, essay called A Certain Tendency in the French Cinema, which is, a, which is an essay that paved the way for the French New Wave. It uh, uh, denounced the tradition of quality, which was evident in, the, in films by the likes of uh, uh, Claude Autain Lara and uh, Jean Delaunay, where the script was paramount and the emphasis was on psychological realism and artistic production values. Together, Truffaut and Astro challenged the conventional idea that film is a producer's medium, causing the idea of politique des auteurs to become a central concept of the Cahier and the new wave, um, the French new wave. Now, the keywords here are Cahier du cinéma, that is a journal, and uh, through Faw's essay, a certain tendency of French cinema. Okay, and uh, again, I let me repeat: the idea was to do away with high production cinema, which relied on studios and stars and also genres, and to give uh, um, and to uh, experiment with new stories, new kinds of unconventional stories, and uh, um, these stories should be told using certain new cinematic techniques. Going back to Truffaut's uh, tradition of quality, what he means by quality is that something that is contrived and projects a bourgeois image of good taste and high culture. For French new wave, style should draw attention to itself and style should become independent of the story. 
The new wave relied on a close relationship between criticism and filmmaking that is the films were in, informed by manifestos by film critics who often became directors themselves. The Kair critics formed their pantheon of important author directors including Jean Renoir, Robert Bresson, Jean uh, Cocteau, Max Offels, Jacques Tati, Jacques Becker and uh, they were uh, uh, great admirers of Hollywood or British Hollywood film director Alfred Hitchcock and also Hollywood directors some, such as Samuel Fuller, Howard Hawke, Nicholas Ray and so on. So, though the author theory has been uh, hotly debated since its inception, uh, it nevertheless is an important tool to understand films through an understanding of the director and their body of works. At this point, let me uh, quote Truffaut to you or let me cite Truffaut's famous quotation that uh, I demand that a film express either the joy of making cinema or the agony of making cinema. I am not at all interested in anything in between. So, a cinema has to either capture the joy or agony and it should be and it should be clearly reflected on screen. French new wave cinema was also quite influenced by uh, film noir, especially as we uh, as it was prevalent in Hollywood. Uh, the reason was during the second world war American films were not screened in the occupied France basically the areas around Vichy. This means that immediately after the war there was a great demand for Hollywood products. Some of the much appreciated films were The Maltese Falcon, Citizen Kane, Double Indemnity and Laura. Though uh, through these films the French uh, cinema fails recognize that a key event has been taking place in Hollywood and they have been missing, uh, uh, missing out on something that important. Now, most of these films were based on uh, the, the noir films are based on uh, popular novels you know pulp novelists uh, works of pulp novelists such as Dashiell Hammett and Raymond uh, Chandler and James Ken etcetera. Film noir combined the hard boiled prose of these writers with European expressionism, yeah, expressionist uh, cinematography, uh, interplay of lights and shadows and the so called chiaroscuro lights which immerse uh, which immensely appeal to Kyer's all these these things uh, immensely appeal to Kyer critics. And, and uh, this was one um, uh, you know one of the cinematic styles and movements that uh, um, French new wave directors were in extremely influenced by and uh, tried to incorporate some of the features in their films. There is also a difference between uh, the, the French author and Hollywood author theory. So, the author theory uh, in uh, Hollywood was or in America was developed by someone called Andrew Saris. For Hollywood an author is a director who transcends the script by imposing on, uh, the, uh, on it his own style and vision or his signature style. An author film involves subjective and personalized filmmaking and especially through mise en scene how a director stages scenes, lights, sets, costumes etcetera. For uh, French new filmmakers. Uh, uh, there is no pre-existing story, what is important are the spontaneous events that took place in front of the camera and of course, director is more important than the uh, producer. Moreover, an author uh, is a director who manifests a consistency of style and theme across his works and believed in abandoning the script in favor of improvisation and spontaneity. Coming to French New Wave, the label novel vague was a uh, in other words you know it was a cool journalistic expression already in prevalence uh, in 1950s. The new wave was initially a phrase applied to the second post second world war generation in France identified as something somewhat rebellious towards established French institutions. It was a generation that identified more with uh, the great Hollywood star James Dean, jazz music you know Hollywood 
uh, products rather than uh, uh, French philosophers or uh, French actors such as Jean Gabon. So, the, the, we are talking about that generation which was uh, quite Hollywoodized. Now, um, French new wave practitioners they rejected the cinematic practices of the 50s, they made low budget films shot on locations with new actors. Uh, uh, in other words, they came out of the studios and they preferred natural lights to studio style lighting and preferred uh, natural sound to extensive studio dubbing. During the second world war American films <coughs> so, um, uh, were uh, basically we have already talked about that uh, the American films were not uh, screened and this was the time when French filmmakers started uh, you know sort of paying homage to Hollywood films and their styles and techniques of filmmaking. They used lightweight cameras, lights and sounds equipment and it allowed the French uh, the new wave fil uh, French directors to shoot in the streets rather than in the studios and this fluid camera motion became a trademark of the movement with shots often following characters down Paris streets. The mise en scene of Parisian streets and coffee bars became a defining feature of the films. These people uh, these filmmakers dealt with the stories about the young and the rebellious, they used the language of the youth, were heavily influenced by the uh, popular culture, especially the Hollywood popular culture, generally featured existential themes, think uh, breathless and think of the um, hero okay, who is, uh, who exhibits what you can term only as uh, the so called existential cool. Okay. And then uh, uh, there was also a touch of acceptance of the absurdity, absurdity of the human existence. So, that is the influence of French existentialist philosophy here. The characters in uh, French new wave films are often marginalized young anti-heroes and uh, loners with uh, no family ties who behave spontaneously and uh, often act amorally or immorally and are by and large anti-authoritarian. There was a general cynicism concerning politics and, the, and cinema reflected a deliberate distanciation between the screen and spectators. They did not attempt to create feeling of empathy, but it was more like Brechtian kind of cinema where the idea was to uh, force the spectators to think rather than empathize, empath empathize and feel with the, what is happening on the screen. The most important legacy of the French new wave cinema was to create a strong authorial voice and it also led to the democratization of cinema with uh, uh, you know people trying everyone could now aspire to become a filmmaker because film they, these filmmakers proved that films need not have high gloss, high glamour and high production values. One of the key filmmakers of the French new wave was Alain Rene. Um, he studied film editing at France's uh, first film school uh, IDHEC and after leaving college he directed a couple of documentaries including uh, uh, Night and Fog uh, which was released in 1955 which is a highly evocative work on the horrors of Auschwitz. Influenced by comics, graphic novels and the exceptional works of the French writer Marcel Proux and the German writer Franz Kafka, René's work reflect homage to all these three writers. Um, his films illustrate a crossover between the developments in Nouveau Roma, the new novel and the Nouveau Vague cinema. In his first film Hiroshima Mon Amour, uh, which is based, uh, which is a 1959 movie, which is based on a screenplay uh, by Margaret Dura. Rene draws on the experience of his documentary short films. We are shown, we are told that a French actress is having an affair with a Japanese architect in Hiroshima, where she has come for a film shooting. And uh, uh, Rene uses documentary footage of the 1945 bombing of the city, that is Hiroshima and uh, 
the film began as a documentary about Hiroshima and the bomb. A remarkable moment in the film is when uh, the actress, the heroine of the film looks at her lover, uh, the Japanese lover who is sleeping and his outstretched right hand twitches slightly. This leads with a jolt to the memory of the twitching arm of a dying German lover. So, this is like um, association of memory, associative nature of memory. Okay, so, it is quite Proustian in, uh, and evocative. Rene is a, a most uh, controversial and uh, still uh, discussed film. It is a typical you know kind of film that film appreciation enthusiasts talk about and classes talk about. It is called Last Year at Maria Bau, uh, Lane Dernier al Maria Bau, uh, which was released in 61. It is a film about loss and regret and uh, <coughs> It is quite derivative from uh, 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 Goethe, the German writer jo Johann Wolfgang Goethe's uh, memories of falling in love with a young girl at a place called Maria Bau. So, when he, Goethe was rejected by her, he penned a personal poem called Maria Bau, Elegy. Rene sets the scene in an elegant baroque cast castle, which has been converted into a luxury hotel. It, this is a heaven for the rich and the clientele spend their time with card games, theatre performance and strolling in the Baroque garden outside. Um, it is based on a screenplay by the Nova Roma journalist, novelist uh, sorry, um, L. A. Rob Grille and the film is set like a puzzle involving three characters. A woman uh, is, uh, there are no names, so the woman is A and X is her lover or claims to be and M is perhaps uh, her husband or even any figure of authority. So, the film is narrated by X who tells A that they met last year and were lovers. A claims uh, no recollection of this affair and pleads X to leave her alone. X recalls her death, still A does not remember anything. So, Maria Ba's reputation rests on its status as a puzzle that can never be solved where the director flouts all the traditional cinematic rules between subjective and objective points of view. Like in most works of Rene, the past ways like a nightmare and memory plays havoc with the characters. It is a poetic work and Maria Ball enjoys its status as a touchstone of modernist cinema. Another important writer, uh, sorry, filmmaker uh, about whom we have already talked about, uh, we have already been talking about him, that is Francois Truffaut. Along with Jean Liu uh, Godard, Truffaut is the is uh, best known and most uh, in, uh, influential of all French new wave directors. He created a strong narrative elements from his own life and was initially influenced by Hollywood cinema of the 40s. Later, he developed in uh, interest in the films of Howard Hawks, John Ford, Hitchcock. Five of his best films feature a character named Antoine Duenel, which is a thinly disguised version of Truffaut himself. I was telling you about how a new wave, how the new wave directors um, made personal kinds of films, okay, things that they could relate to. So, his uh, those films are. Uh, uh, Antoine and Colette, Stolen Kisses, Bed and Bold, Love on the Run and of course, 400 Blows. He has all, he is also credited with uh, classics such as Shoot the Pianist, Jules and Jim, Day for Night which was in a, released in 1973. The 400 Blows is his most distinguished film uh, which is uh, interestingly dedicated to Andre Bezon. Uh, it is inspired by Truffaut's own life and it shows a young boy Antoine Donal growing up in uh, Paris in a troubled household. Like Truffaut, Antoine also has a very difficult relationship with his mother. He is neglected by his mother and his stepfather and takes refuge in the world of films just like Truffaut. The young uh, protagonist Antoine Donal uh, is played by the great actor Jean-Pierre Law. Okay, so, um, uh, 
uh, I have already talked about him earlier that he was one of the um, you know new stars of the French new wave films, the French new film, uh, uh, French uh, new wave gave birth to several promising actors and Jean-Pierre Law was one of the most important actors of this period. The film is a result of an unwanted, he, the, uh, the boy is a result of an unwanted pregnancy just like Truffaut. The boy lives in a very small apartment uh, with his uh, mother and his stepfather and uh, they are indifferent to him and he also faces some problems with his teachers. He seeks solace in the company of his friends, stories by Belzo and cinema. The film was famously shot on real Paris locations and Truffaut pays homage to the process of filmmaking when young Antoine writes in an amusement park cent uh, centrifuge which resemble, uh, resembles a zoetrop in its earlier avatar. Zoetrop is a film equipment. Jules and Jim is adapted from a novel, another great film and sensitive film uh, work by um, Truffaut. Jules and Jim, they fall in love, they are best friends and fall in love with the same woman, Catherine. They are separated by the First World War and later they try to live together in a sort of menage a trois, which was very unconventional according to the morals of those times. The situation is made possible when Jules married to Catherine um, and he declares that he would rather tolerate infidelity than lose either one of them. He does not want to lose his wife and he does not want to lose his friends. So, he permits them to continue having an affair and continue living in the same house. Um, Day for Night 1973 is also a personal account for uh, 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 Truffaut's personal account um, of the precarious relationship between life and illusion and the off screen upheavals between the members of the film production team. It stars uh, Truffaut himself as a film director and there is a moment where he as a boy steals a poster of Citizen Kane from the front of a theatre and uh, that moment for, uh, finds a place in day for night. One of the most significant filmmakers of this period was Jean Liu Godard who started off as a uh, critic with Kayedu cinema just like Truffaut and Chabrol and others. He also emphasized on style and form and is considered a radical filmmaker by any standard. He was influenced by the German dramatist Bertolt Brecht and his theory of alienation and he famously declared you need a beginning, a middle and an end, but not necessarily in that order. You remember Aristotle who said there should be a beginning and a middle and an end and it, uh, a plot should follow that order and Godard questioned it. His major films are Breathless, uh, The Little Soldier, A Woman is a Woman, I am just giving you the English translations, My Life to Live, Contempt, Alpha Will, All is Well. <coughs> and a band apart. Um, Breathless is his most significant work, most famous work and according to the uh, film critic Roger Ebert, modern films begin with Breathless, 19, it's a 1959 film. The plot in Breathless centers on Michel played by Jean Paul Belmondo who is a, a small time Parisian crook who has just murdered a policeman. Anxious to flee the country, he persuades his girlfriend Patricia uh, played by uh, Jean Seberg to accompany him. It was a key film of the French new wave and rejects the well made traditional French cinema and adapted an edgier and more experimental style. <coughs> uh, one of the key features of this film is the employment of an editing technique called the jump cut. And the jump cut involves an uncanny jolt in a film's progress drawing the viewers attention to disturbing illusion of time and space. A film might cut abruptly from one location to the next without any attempt to empty or sorry to employ those devices or matches of 
eye lines. You see when you watch a movie, you uh, it should match your eye line, it should be at an eye level, okay, but a jump cut suddenly disrupts that and therefore calls attention to itself that something is happening which is not continuous. So, it disrupts the illusion of continuity. Um, uh, a brief history of jump cut, it was uh, the French pioneer Georges Melie who first recognized that a jump cut could generate magical or comic effects if the appearance of a subject film from a single vantage point was altered between shots. Although Godard was not the first to use or think about the possibilities of a jump cut, modern use of the technique has more or less come to be associated with him. Uh, so, this is uh, what I wanted to tell you about the French new wave and uh, it had a lasting Im uh, impact on um, world cinema as we have been talking about Andrew Saris, the leading film critic uh, uh, from America and he, is he too supported the ideas of the author theory and um, propounded that indeed it is the director who is the sole author of his work. This is regardless of the contribution of the writers, producers or actors. Saris is the American cinema maps the history of the talking picture period up to 68, 1968 into 11 categories of filmmakers with titles such as pantheon directors, strained seriousness and lightly likable and then each category files directors uh, in an alphabetical order. So, what we are talking basically about the, is the director's authority here and what did French new wave uh, led to? or lead to, it, it led to the democratization of cinema, the idea that films could be shot using minimum equipments, they could be shot on real locations without uh, the gloss um, of, uh, uh, of studios and also without the aura of stars. So, this led to the uh, impression that uh, anyone who has a story to tell is free to tell a story and even today we see you know the, with the growth of digital filmmaking and all how uh, film make more and more people are beginning to uh, find their own voice. So, this is the selected readings, these are the selected readings I would like to you to focus on these. So, um, you have um, Hitchman a history of French new wave cinema, you have uh, David A. Gerstner, the practices of authorship, J. Miller, the French new wave and the new. So, thank you very much and we meet for our next class.